Hey everybody, and welcome to the fort, and hopefully the final part of uh, texturing this asset, where we are going to try and add in all the welding, as well as the scraping on the metal that we have. Now, this is what we have so far. We uh, went over how to create everything from the model, and then uh, do the unwrapping, the texturing of the metal, as well as the discoloring that you would get from the temperature. So if you want to see how this thing was made, check out the previous videos. And now this is what we will be trying to do. As you can see over here, especially at this uh, type of a model, the welding is very, very visible. And that's not because uh, whoever made this uh, chair didn't know how to make it. It's because this is the type of uh, furniture design that they go with. They want to have the welding be visible. And on one side, you know, usually up uh, on the bottom, uh, on the outer side, they have this thing sanded down. So you can see where you have that damage on the actual uh, material. So let's go ahead and create that uh, result over here. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go in here, create one folder, call this thing color, and just organize these uh, guys a bit so they're not in the way that much. Close this thing, there we go. So now we have the base metal as one and the color as a separate material. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here on top and I'm going to go and add a layer. Now this layer will not need to have uh, all of these material uh, channels on it, but I will need to have the uh, height and the roughness uh, elements. I can also uh, play around with the color. So let me uh, check. And what I want to do now is I basically want to have this thing like this. So when I paint in, I can see uh, see it like this, but I'm going to uh, decrease the size of my brush. And in here, I want to use an alpha for this. So I can uh, go in here or uh, I can go with either an alpha or a brush. So if we go with a brush, what uh, happens here is when you uh, scroll over one of these guys, you can see that they have a different result. So if I click here, you're going to see that I have a result like this one. Now I can also increase the height here. And when I dr uh, drag in here, you're going to see that I am actually discoloring this thing. But this is not what I want. So I'm going to turn off the color for now. So when I click in here, it's actually giving me this uh, sort of a result, not the ideal one at the moment. So for the color again, I'm going to try with something like a very white color. And I'm going to make it 100% metallic. So when I go in like this, you, you can see that now it looks like metal. But the problem that I'm facing at the moment is that I have a lack of information here for better um, part of the name and that is because at the moment we are using a 2k resolution in the uh, user viewport so what i'm going to go is Control z to remove that and now i'm going to increase this thing down to a 4k resolution now the reason for doing this is that we can see all of this information that's going to be painted in because it's going to be a very small uh, brush information we will need to have a bit more texture density or uh, texture resolution. So that's going to be transferred better into our viewport. Uh, the only drawback is that, well, this thing will be a bit, it's going to make our user interface a bit less responsive, but it will give us a much better result as to how this thing is going to look like something like this. All right, so I'm going to control Z and I'm going to try and choose a different brush, something that's not going to be uh, this clean because uh, what you can see right here, this is a very, very clean brush. Let's try and find something that's going to be a bit more broken down. Again, make it a lot smaller. So there you go. I think this actually works just well. We can go around and put that thing in like that. So it's giving us a nice look as this thing was actually welded. 
Another thing that you might want to know is that, for example, when you're using uh, this sort of a brush, one of the things that is important is the spacing parameter. For example, if I click here and drag out, you're going to see that I'm going to have a line that's basically like this. So if I go ahead and I increase the spacing to maybe like 60, that's going to make it so that every time uh, this thing is dotted in, the space in between two dots is much more um, pronounced. So we can control this and get it to a point where we are actually happy with how this thing looks. And I think that with this, it actually looks realistic as far as uh, this sort of a welding goes. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to try and basically put in this thing where the red color is. There we go. Kind of looks realistic. Now go across. And the thing is that you can go over it one more time. It's going to give us a bit of, uh, of an illusion that is building up some geometry in there. There we go. And depending on how uh, strong you want to have this result is basically going to be your choice. But you cannot go wrong because like we saw, this is not supposed to be a clean weld, but it's supposed to be something that's going to be visible. So just go over and cover it up like this. And if you notice, we're only putting this thing on the sides here, and we are not putting it on the front face or the back uh, face as well. So just the side ones, because for the front one and the other one, we're going to have something else to do. So I'm going to go in, fill up this, and just so you don't have to actually uh, watch me do the same thing for a few minutes, I'm going to pause the video. And as soon as I'm finished, I'll be back with you guys. All right, so a few minutes later, we actually have all of the weldings done. I've uh, went in and I manually added in all of those uh, visible weldings. And I've actually even made it a bit more emphasized because, well, that's the main uh, thing about this. And now what I, what I can also do here is, well, actually what I need to do is I need to add this sort of a detail. Now on the corners here, I can see that I have some uh, damage on these pipes. So I'm just going to rotate the sun so I can see it better like this. Now I'm going to name this welding. Now I'm going to go ahead and create another fill layer. And this fill layer, I'm either, well, actually, I don't need to use a filler. What I can do is go in and try and use one of the materials that's already present. Not the smart ones, but just the regular ones. So I can go with maybe aluminum or aluminum, whatever you want to call it. And in here, just go ahead and I'm going to try and sample this color in here. So click and sample this color there we go so that's the color of uh the metal that's uh, the uh, or the color of the metal uh, how it looks like when it's grinded down so i'm going to go down put a black mask on it so now i just need to mask in where i want to see this uh, metal showing up and the easy thing to do that is just by going to the alphas. You can use one of your, your own alphas, but I'm going to try to find something in here that kind of looks like scratches. And I think that there is one that we saw. So let's try dirt brush. I think we actually use this one on the Twitch stream. So when you just click, you're going to see this thing appear, which is OK, but I just need to make it a bit smaller. There we go, like this like this and also what i want to do here is i want to increase the height a bit so i'm going to uh, open up the height and just increase it that's going to give it that look like it's actual damaged or actual uh, disturbance of the uh, 
surface of the metal like this. I might want to get this thing rain in just a tiny bit weaker, so something like this, probably, yeah, this thing, think this is going to work like this. Alright, so let's go in and just paint in where we want to have this appear. Also, it would be a much better idea when you're doing this thing for a model that you want to have uh, finalized to basically just break this thing down a bit so it's not the same uh, alpha everywhere so you can just break it down with a different a uh, couple of different ones so maybe use uh, something like maybe this one or something that's uh, your own alpha but in this case I'm just gonna go with uh, this one just so you can see how this thing looks it's not looking that not looking for that extra realism just trying to finish up this thing there we go and also when you get to uh, this point you can just hold down the uh, control key click uh, left click and go up and down to rotate the alpha and now you can just go ahead and put it like this there we go so you get that uh, look here go do the same thing up here over there so everywhere where you have this thing meeting horizontally just put in that look and you're you'll be golden all right, there we go. Now again, we're just gonna click and rotate the alpha and apply it over here. Both sides. Rotate and reapply. But like I said, if you are going for maximum realism, just break down the alpha so you don't have this look like it's uh, the same thing done everywhere. And you might want to maybe go in here, rotate a bit, and put something like uh, some of the damage to be ro uh, rotated. So it's gonna look more realistic. There we go. There we go, just a few more. Um, if you're holding down the shift and right click, you can just rotate the HDRI for the lighting so you can see how your model looks like in different lighting scenarios. You can even change the HDRI, but we don't really need to do that. We just want to see how the light is going to look like when it's hitting this thing. So it's fine on that side. This thing has been done. And the only thing that's left is, I think, this uh, bottom portion here. And once we're done with this, I think that our metal will be done. Yep, that thing is done. All right, so when we rotate around, we can see that this thing has been, or is showing up all the places where it's welded. We can see that damage. We can control how far that damage goes uh, outwards. So if we increase the height, it's gonna look more uh, like it's the like protruding outwards or bulging out. If we go inside, it's gonna look like it's uh, eating inside or into the uh, the model. And I think it kind of looks better when it's eating into the model. So I'll leave it like that. And just like that, I think we're done with the metal. So let's unhide the seat. Now, when we go over and we click on the seat material, this will clean up the layers. And because now we're working on different uh, material, namely the seat material. So for this one, since 
this is just a simple leather one i'm not going to do anything complicated to it i'm just going to use one of the already existing materials I'm just going to use a smart material for this let's go down and choose one of them i think uh leather fine aged was what we used so i'm gonna have to delete the stop layer uh in here we're gonna go down to the leather color and increase the scale to maybe like five as well as uh, the leather pattern to something like five and also i might also want to increase the size in here so we get more details for the leather so there we go so 4k resolution as soon as this thing recompiles the information we're gonna see much uh, more of this uh, leather there we go and quite honestly even though it looks really nice i think that would be easier if we just used a normal material instead of a uh, aged material so let's see if what we have over here might be something that's better suited for our need let's try the rough leather what rough nope not this one leather big green well if we want something like this we could let's just try and increase the ah it's too big if i try out the leather uh, medium grain i can maybe increase the scale here maybe like five and it's gonna give me something that's not the ideal again so all right and let's try this last one i think it's gonna be the same one all right i guess we'll go with what we initially had which was the fine letter aged and the only thing that i'm going to do is actually reduce the amount of uh, roughness we see here so if we just increase the roughness that should decrease how much this thing is reflective all right and there we go all right that's cool and just like that we have our chair made to look like the original image that we have and what i'm going to do is just sample this color of the original uh, of the color that we have in the leather in the image there we go be like this one i might want to just add a smidge more of the color back in and just like that we are back at having the colors right so now if i basically go in and put these two models i just rotated this so we can see it side to side better like this we can see that we got this thing pretty close to how it looks like in this uh, case. And so with that, we are finished. Hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new here today. If you enjoyed the video, then smash the like button. And also, if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. If you would like to support me and the channel, the support links will be in the description of the video below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Peace!